Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. If you are new here, thank you for turning up. If you have come back again, as I always say, I absolutely love you. I'm going to pause you guys there quickly, though. Please go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Give us a review. If you're feeling kind, give us five. It's how we grow. Uh, it's been a big year as well. So I can't thank you all enough for all the support you guys are constantly giving us. Uh, we've been lucking out with some guests, definitely some guests that are well beyond um, some that we deserve to, but we appreciate all the support. I've been getting a lot of messages from you guys, uh, giving us a lot of props, asking for guests as well. So keep sending them through. Um, we're doing something a bit different today. If you can't tell by the setting, I'm actually in WA in Perth and I was fortunate enough uh, a couple of weeks ago to meet a couple of gentlemen who I'd seen flying around on TikTok and Instagram. Um, so I'm super glad we could get them on the podcast, but the guys from the Kick It Forward skit show from the podcast, Josh Garlop and Harry Fitzgerald. Well, thank you guys for coming along. <laughs> yeah, your luck's run out. Yeah. <laughs> with your guests. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> do you know what, though? Like, you guys have, like, triple the following of a lot of the footy players in Melbourne. Which Yeah, Josh Bruce isn't anything, are Yeah. Yeah. Kicks 10 goals, just but don't worry about it. After he's spoken about getting death threats, he's just thrown him under the bus. Yo, I'm not <laughs> setting them. <laughs> yeah, well, honestly, though, that you guys do some funny skits around footy, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, we like, um, we, we love... AFL and sport. Um, I used so to be a sports much. reporter and just in WA, it's hard to avoid AFL. Like it's a bit very much part of the lexicon here. Everyone talks about it all the time. Even if you don't like it, you sort of have to talk about it. Like mm. with West Coast doing so bad recently, everyone's talking about that. When Frio is up and about, it's the same and same with West Coast up and about. So yeah, it, it is fun. But we, it's sometimes a bit too serious, but yeah. Is it a fickle city? Because like we, in my lifetime anyway, I haven't seen West Coast do as bad as this. Um, and obviously, well, I've lived in Adelaide. When the Crows go bad, everyone turns on them very quickly. Oh, uh, obviously, there's a few Melbourne teams that cop the same sort of hate, and they're in the news every week anyway. But from a, from a Perth perspective, like, is that the case with WA? Oh, everyone's crumbling over here. Every West Coast <laughs> supporter is crumbling. And even though even though Freo aren't doing you know as well as they expected, all the Freo fans are loving what's going on at West Coast as well. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's good. I think, oh, at least West Coast, they've got the uh, the memory of the. Premiership five years ago, I think it was. So, yeah, it's it's definitely new what's happening. But, I mean, it is still a game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's just a fair bit of money involved too, I suppose, with the clubs. And that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we, we, we want to go into a little bit of your work, but we are missing one of you guys today. R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. Um, bit of a fan favourite or, or some would say <laughs> a, a hated man. But, Harry, I might let you describe him because oh. got a, <laughs> you, you, you described him very well to me before. Well, Giorgio, you know, I mean, Josh also sums it up well. He's a polarizing character amongst amongst <laughs> the um uh, the the viewers of the of the skits. Yeah, they like they love him, but they uh, some guys in in particular, like he was in a couple of sketches lately because he's away. Decided to take nineteen weeks um, leave, like he does every year, goes to Italy. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, he's very much loved and um, some guys fire back at him too, which is what you want. I was telling him the other day, he's like Kyle Sanderlands and he got really offended. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I can maybe understand that to yeah. an extent. Yeah. <laughs> Why? 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 I mean, look, he's no. a polarising figure. Well, he's Gior a Giorgio's about five foot seven. No. Just being polite. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe correct. Maybe, yeah, maybe a bit less. Mm -hmm. Is he five foot seven? Yeah, yeah exactly. He's, well, five standing foot seven. next to you guys, he looks five foot two like me because you guys are what, six foot oh, two, we're, three? We're, we're up mm, a little bit more. Yeah. Five, are you five, six, six, five, six, five, six, six? I'm six, seven. He's six, six. Wow. Uh, yeah, 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 that's it. Tall boys. And you're creating content, not slam dunking and stuff. That's got to hurt. No. <laughs> I can't. So many people ask me if I play the great game basketball. Yeah. No, the worst. So bad. <laughs> really? So bad. We had a shoot once with um, Bryce Cotton <laughs> with the Wildcats in this and this gym and um, that sponsors them. And we rocked up and we had to do this. Like It was a really silly sketch. And Bryce Cotton was really accommodating, but we had exactly 45 minutes to do it from start to finish. And there were two locations. The second spot was a basketball court. And I passed Harry the ball and I was like, just look like a basketball. And his feet were about a centimetre apart. And I played a lot of basketball. And I, I couldn't get through my head that he'd never touched. Like he'd barely ever. And he's like, mate, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Shut up. No, no <laughs> clue. Not a oh, clue. Really? No, 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 no. Did just you play any sport at all growing up? Footy. Yeah, footy. yeah, yeah. yeah right, footy. Okay. I played like I played basketball in juniors. All right. oh, I could have been great. Yeah, well, I could have been great if I stuck at did it. Did you grow early though? Of like, uh, yeah, yeah. I think like year year eleven year, or year twelve. I got to about this height. That's pretty late, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but the tall ones are generally. Oh, well, like, yeah, but yeah. Sorry, yeah, you're right. I'd given up basketball by then. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. okay. And then I was trying to work on how to give up footy, and um, stuck at that for a few years. Right, okay. Well, because I want to go into for obviously some of the listeners here might not have seen the Kick It Forward platform on 
Instagram and TikTok, but some of the funniest skits, and particularly we, we've actually had a couple of guests on your skits. Chuck's Chat, he's been on that oh, yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe some of you guys have seen it, but for those that don't know what it is, um, might be best for you guys give us a bit of a background on it because it, it is some of the most hilarious skits that just take the fun out of sports culture and culture in general. Uh, yeah. Well, we would reckon the ratio is of sports to non-sports skits. Cause it's probably the, more non-sports, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, they're my, they're my favourite, but, I mean, sports such a loved thing by everyone. And, I, you know. I think maybe the AFL ones just fly in Melbourne then. Because I think so. We like um, If you look at all our demographics and stuff, we have a really big following in Melbourne, and we kind of notice it, I suppose because we're out and about more when we're over there. Like in here, you know, we're not out as much as much in that regard, but, you know, you're out you know, having a beer and stuff in Melbourne. And then there's people who are like screaming at you like, oh, Lanky Ranger. And, yeah, we love you. Yeah. Lanky Ranger, you stupid idiot. Yeah. <laughs> because part of our pod is like s- sort of self-deprecating stuff. But when <laughs> someone in Richmond is screaming, fuck you, it's like, and then like, love yeah. the pod, go fuck yourself. <laughs> it, is, it is self-deprecating, but we feed it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for example, today, like we had a photo shoot a couple of weeks ago. Josh shared some photos on the Instagram page today and said, it was like one of those like uh, real, no, no, the uh, like slideshow things. And I he said, which photo would you most like to punch? <laughs> which of us in the, in the photo would you most like and to then punch? And then Osher Gunsberg replies, f- like, five. And I'm like, oh. oh is he not a fan? <laughs> no, 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 he is, but he's just buying into uh, it. Right, right. Someone, very good by like, him. Someone I work with who, like, I never talk to about this content I'm doing, just goes, four. <laughs> what have you got to do with this? <laughs> <That's stuck laughs> off. So people are actually invested. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when you guys walk the street in Melbourne, are you getting recognised now? Oh, a little bit. Like, not, not honestly, like, not, not too much at all like it's always uh it's always just really nice people that i think we're still niche enough we're very niche still so people oh uh, it must be like an inside joke or something like that it must feel so occasionally we'll bump into people and they're always really friendly um we were at dr morse in in melbourne about two weeks ago and uh we met some cool people there and they were sort of screaming at us at the end of the night and um that was a bit surreal i think like when that sort of stuff happens for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, I knew who you guys were. I know the, the views and listens you get, and I know you're doing collaboration posts, but not that niche. I mean, you've got like a hundred thousand followers on Instagram almost and a couple hundred on TikTok, which in the modern day is pretty big. Yeah. It's not easy to grow quick on Instagram anyway. So yeah. Oh, we'll see how we, I don't, I don't know. It still feels because it's, because it's been so gradual. It's still, I still feel, think we're losers probably so. a good way to think though, <laughs> yeah. hey. it, that's probably, probably what keeps the humor in it yeah. i mean yeah we're pro- we probably all are i'm like sure. why don't we have a billion followers oh god damn it. <laughs> um but no uh, the one good thing i think about the size we are now is uh you know we can put something out even if it, and we can just make it because we think it's funny and i think that's a good place to be in like often they they flop or whatever but it's still we're just making because we find it funny sometimes and it, i think it still keeps it a bit pure mm. that way rather than be like, oh, okay, what do they want to see? Mm. And I think that we're at a stage now where you can put it out and enough people will see it to generate a bit to make it like have been an asset now rather than just being like, all right, dancing to TikTok, we're doing it how we're finally doing it. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't yeah. wait. So when, when did this cycle, when did this journey start? Um, I think we, we've spoken about it a couple of times. Um, I used to be a sports reporter and I was working at the West Australian. I was previously at Fox Sports and I'd always sort of been dabbling in making these silly videos. Like once I I did my ankle playing basketball and I got the footage and cut it up in a way to like Skrillex because I was hopping so stupidly. And like my mate Jordan finds it really funny when I play it. And um, and that was kind of funny. And that was the first one I ever did. And then we, I, I remixed a broadcasting video I did um, for like a finance read to something. And then I think my ex-girlfriend once said like, this is really embarrassing. Um, and then... And then I kind of didn't do anything for a while and then I got made redundant and started just tra- having a crack during COVID, at the start of COVID. And then I was a bit fearful of it. And then me, Harry and Georgia were all in similar spaces and similar sense of humour and started sort of collaborating it a lot more. Mm, I think, I don't know, our first one together, I think, was the KFC one. Did somebody say KFC? <laughs> Long time, like three years ago. Yeah, about three years ago, I just yeah. I just started this job where I had um, afternoons free. So I'm like, well... Oh. I like this. I like, Josh, you'd already made a few videos in that time, and I'd go, "Oh, I like what he's doing." Yeah, because yeah, you're so you're currently working in Nova. Yes, really? correct. So that, that's yep. why your afternoons are free for those. Yeah, so I do. Yeah. Um, I would work with the with the Brecky Show here in mm-hmm. Perth. Yeah, yeah, and then a bit of announcing stuff as well. So who who does the Brecky Show in Nova? It's Nathan, Nat, and Sean um, here in Perth. Right, They've okay. been um, doing it for well, Nathan and Nat for twenty years now, um, and Sean's been involved for fourteen years. Okay, uh, rate highly. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do literally rate the highest in Perth, <laughs> oh, really? but I also okay. rate yeah. them highly in the way they all work as well. Oh, so they've been pretty interesting. Do you, I mean, do you pick, odd question, but do you pick up ideas and things from that part of the world? Are uh, you to take I, into what you I, guys are doing? I pick up the way that they work, like. Sean is the expert at self-deprecating comedy. He's great right. at being a bit of a punching bag sometimes and playing his role. Nathan, highly, highly prepared. Um, uh, he's got six things in his back pocket ready to talk about. Um, and then Nat, who's the anchor, highly intelligent and polished on radio. Right. And, um, yeah, they all bring something together and they've been doing well. That's pretty cool. So when you guys, th- you mentioned the KC video being the first one, were you guys actually friends at that point or did you just notice they were creating – Content, George was creating content, or Harry and George. Oh, so and you uh, the well, Josh started it. Yeah. Uh, I had done a, quite a few videos before that KFC one that when I got involved. Um, well, I knew Josh through my sister, I Yeah, guess? just like classy like Perth. Like Small. You went to the same primary school, then mm. the sister, same age as me, and then uh, George I went to uni with. So we've all had backgrounds in broadcasting, and then. Uh, and then just it kind of linked up. Like George had told me he wanted to be involved. We made a couple. And then Harry too. And then eventually after doing so many together, we're just like, far out. We may as well just start always doing it together. So anyone else that appears in the videos, they're either guys making stuff or they're just our friends and family or uh, and like our girlfriends or something like that. Right. Because this, this is what I wanted to kind of go into like a bit of the process, but I also wanted to compliment you guys because I assume it takes a lot of work and I don't <laughs> think you guys get a lot of reward for that. But the first time we met was actually at an event a few weeks ago. I don't know if you guys realised, but I was on the phone had a work call I had to take outside the room we were in and I just saw you guys filming. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck oh, are these guys? Oh, with and yeah, Tom like, Mitchell. What, yeah, I was like, what the fuck are these guys doing? Well, it looked like you were filming a skit because like the way you were filming it and you are like taking stuff mm. and retaking stuff and I was like, this is why you guys are getting success because like you're at an event and you're kind of not present because you're doing something and making the most of the opportunity. Or I mean, that was a weird one because we meant to do something with Josh Giddy and he pulled out for not, nothing malicious or anything. He, he, I think there was just a he couldn't with the NBA, or the something. NBA, yeah, something like that. And which then, is weird. yeah, well, not with us, with just the branding. And yeah. then, uh, and then we were with we spoke to Tom Mitchell and Patty Cripps, and they were involved. And we still haven't edited that one because we need to get it approved by them. But they were, they were really cool too. But um, yeah, it takes a, the edits. The editing takes a while, but and the writing. I, sometimes you write them and they're. You just think they're going to be really, really good. And can, I, can I just make something clear? That Josh is doing a vast majority of the work for this group. So, oh, right. <laughs> like I mean, I'm... Writing I'm writing process? Um, I think... We, oh, we collaborate on the writing, Hayes. Writing, yeah. be, writing's become a little bit more even, but yeah. still with, like, ideas. And Josh will... You know, someone's got an idea, and then he'll go, oh, well, why is it relevant? And yeah. then why is, is it... Are we going to take it to the... How are we going to take it to the next level and make it silly and interesting? But in terms of editing, Josh, 100%. Um, and, you know, business side of things, Josh, pretty much 100%. But the – I mean, I, I want to contribute more. I'm working, still working full-time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah working well, shit yeah, hours. Most, most content <laughs> creators in the Australia are working yeah. full-time. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's normal, I guess. Cause yeah. It, it's just part of it. But that's, that's what's admirable about it because it's kind of – you know, now this market's sort of starting to open up where people are interested. Social media is booming. So when you are making good content, it gets recognised. There are opportunities as you, know, you guys are probably starting to experience, which is great. Yeah, I think that's the coolest thing probably. We're pretty early on in it and we're still small, but uh, it's just the fact that I can go full-time doing it is great. And, you know, you're busy. You're still busy, but every now and then you realise, oh, okay, you're still doing something awesome. So it's still a lot of hours. I reckon I edit probably... 70 hours a week or something like really? between the podcast and trying to pump out videos and so anytime anytime i'm by myself or my girlfriend's watching which she doesn't really like watching a, a series i'll just edit because i know i know from a start of one that it will take me anywhere between like f- four and 30 hours to edit something so like if it's a challenge you want like we did one with um josh for shelly from adelaide oh this was great i saw this one <laughs> And um, <laughs> and we, we filmed that in the preseason, and and they were Adelaide is so cool to deal with, and um, a lot like and all the clubs are, but uh, I was like, I got this weird idea, like I couldn't really think of anything. I was like, what? Rochelle's kind of funny; it rhymes with lots of things. So what if we did like a word avalanche? But I've never made a song before, so uh, I reached out to another guy called Matt Store to help me write it. And he's like, I'm not doing that for you. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but he gave me some tips and sent me on the right track. And then we got Jack Post to help us write because he's really good with music. So it took us like four months and then we ended up delivering it and then they were like oh that's really cool and i'm like 
Yeah, yeah, it was hell easy. Josh, that was you leveling up, though. That was a new challenge. Was, you, he, wasn't was it? he in that? Josh was he in? Yeah, the yeah. Actual, so we got him in front yeah. of a green screen because we were like, oh, okay, how can we do this? Like, do his little intervention, but have him in it, but then go away. So we'll chuck him in a green screen and then we'll get him to do as much as we can and then go away. So we did one with him and Sam Barry, and it was really good, mate. Yeah, I, I've watched that one. You, I think you started, Michelle, and then it just <laughs> went into like a, almost like a bit of a rap yeah, verse or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was it was very good. It was like a court Australian culture. Uh, through sort of all the, the rhyming words. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's it? Chappelle Corby got a. a yeah, I, I, can't, I can't take credit for that one. That was Jack Post. He's, yeah, he's, that, he's so good with um with music, actually. So it'd be cool to work with him more on that stuff. Do you, do you class, like, I mean, I do, but I don't know if you do, but do you class yourself as comedians? Uh, it's pretty hard when you are. It's probably the easiest way to explain it to someone when yeah. they're, like, especially the way I think about it is when you're at, like, a dinner party or something, like a family one where someone has no context <laughs> yeah, in the entire actually, world and you just point. go, oh, comedian. Yeah. And then if there's a follow-up question, then you have to sort of go into that a bit. Right. So I normally say journalist still. Journalist, yeah. Because okay. it avoids having to sort of explain it. And then they're like, bloody social media. Yeah, because uh, if you- I heard, I heard him say comedian to the Uber driver the other day. That was good. <laughs> no, but that's, that's good. I, I get oh, like- Oh, I a, embrace it, yeah. You know, I'll say, you know, I say, actually for prime example, I'll say to someone at, like at work who's a bit older than me, I'll go, oh, I'm going to filming some stuff with the Savo. And you get, oh, yeah, you're an influencer and stuff. I'm like, oh, I'd rather not be <laughs> oh, that. No, I'd rather not be that. That's like called you, that. Then you start leading with comedian or even actor. Like, yeah, oh, I'm not yeah. Fucking influencer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, fuck, it's a good point, though. Like, what is the difference, I guess? But um, That's actually a good clip. Yeah. <laughs> Someone calling you an influencer and taking it to heart. Just because we're on Instagram doesn't mean. <laughs> I mean yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, well, we are. True, though, I mean, there isn't much difference, to be honest. Like, yeah. That's why it's <laughs> as much as we like to. We're glorified influencers, I guess, far out. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's so don't, don't, really don't accept hurts. it. Don't accept it. <laughs> it really is. Not there's anything wrong with well, it. Even I, I even class you guys as actors. I mean, I don't know what the actual process is like, and I'd love to sort of pick your brains on it because it seems like, and I don't know how many takes some of the stuff takes, right? So mm -hmm. I only see the, the front end of it all, but it seems like you guys are actually quite good at acting in regards to the humour that you relate. Uh, genre, I, think genre in. To, I think you have to ask like, actual actors that. I'm sure they would say we're shit house. Yeah, yeah. But this, but for what you're doing, <laughs> for what you're doing, you probably don't want like an Eric Banner type performance. You, you need a bit of humour. Oh, okay. That's just my like Are you biggest saying hero ever. Though. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Do you really? Oh, I love him so I much. I love Eric Banner. I see him. He lives right near me. Oh, St. Kilda fan? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm a Saints fan, but he literally lives up the road. He just walks his dog down. I'm like, that's fucking Eric Banner that's every oh time I see him. Like no there one just is. like, everyone just leaves him. I'm yeah, like, I reckon that's the coolest thing about Melbourne, in a way, is that a guy like Eric Banner can live in like a suburban home. And yeah. Walk, not that it's, pro it's probably a pretty good home. One, well, yeah, but, well, I assume it would be. But he can walk around and everyone's like, oh, that's Eric. And then no one gives a shit. Yeah. He just he just chills out. I see him sometimes having like a coffee with Nick Rewalt. And I'm just like, that's just <laughs> that's the most so alpha like gangster thing in Melbourne. It's like Banner and Rewalt just chat. The most St. Kilda thing yeah, ever. Yeah, the most St. Kilda thing ever. Are you trying to take a snaky little photo? <laughs> no, well? no oh, but yeah. it's like, I'm just hanging with the boys. <laughs> no, nah, I get heartbroken every time I see Nick Rewalt. I just like, I'm like, we didn't wear flag. Oh, yeah. No, it just hurts. Because I'm like, poor guy. Like, he deserved one properly as well. He kind of did, though, with that, like, a cappella um, song he did. Yeah. Did, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's kind of better than a that. Uh, that has got to be one of the worst bits and best bits of content ever made by any AFL team ever. Yeah, well, well, well it actually isn't. It's actually, we did a, um, we do a podcast and we often do, like, audio documentaries on really shit ideas. Or, like, not shit ideas, like, <laughs> really niche, random sporting things. And we looked up, we figured out the a cappella history of it and it was this um virgin used to for some reason for two years it was called the virgin footy festival they made every afl team submit an audio documentary uh, no, a documentary or a or a short film and theirs was that it was like the making of that and will and woody one of the guys did we went through the whole thing but what we realized out of the 36 that were made the acapella one was actually it won that year because it was so much better than some of the other ones oh wow so there was worse ones yeah there was that. worse ones the jonathan brown one was actually way worse um, he's in bed with the premiership and been like, <laughs> it's like, I can't remember what he says, but it's like, basically he's in love with the premiership. Oh God. It's, there's a lot of really cringe ones, but I really appreciate them, but it's, it, I don't think it's fair. The acapella one gets so much crap. Yeah. Well, I don't know why it does. Maybe, maybe cause it did, it did win. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, maybe. Secure, they did some, they did some interesting ones at that time. They did like stuff on the beach and yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were going all in. It was, um, we got Tom Lee. He played for them during that period and he's from WA and he was so funny talking about it because he was removed enough to just sort of shred the whole concept. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah. It's, so yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's yeah. it's decent. Now I want to go into some of the, the obviously the videos you do. Like as I, as I touched on the work behind it, um, 
I think would be significantly more than people maybe imagine because the editing process, it, it might be quicker, but just out of curiosity, like how do the ideas derive? Like what's the process, creative process for you guys in that sense of, because it is very niche, some of the stuff you do, but you <laughs> grab like Australian culture and take the piss out of things really well. But it, at sometimes it's like, it's very deep thinking or um, like the, the one, for instance, that the most recent one, the gambling one, that was quite funny. Um, oh, the cast, heads of the cast. Yeah, but yeah. then maybe other ones is a bit more self-explanatory, like the AFL signboards where it's like, well, that what the hell that's is going happening. on here? Yeah, that's just take the piss out of that pretty quickly. Yeah, I think it's just if we find it funny, I guess. That's the, it's, the core of it. We write it down and then it's like, can it be made into a yeah, format? Well, well, that's the thing. We'll often be having a conversation about something or with someone else and you'll go, you've had this mindset for years, Josh. I'm, I'm kind of getting a bit better at it, going, hang on, that's a video. There's a video, like there's something in that, there's something in that. And then right. you can write it down or run it. Or I'll, I'll like to call you. Josh doesn't like um, when I call him. I call him all the time. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, like, call I'm like hear me out. Are you a texter? Yeah, I'll like, text him 17 I'm texts. I'm so glad. Oh, no, I did call Josh once. Actually. I'm like, hear me out. I've got, I've got, I'm, no, I'll go, I've got an idea. And he goes, what is it? On text. And I'm like, not telling until you call me. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, yeah, that, that, I can understand that. And Giorgio's pretty similar too. He'll like... uh He'll just, he'll go, oh, I've got this idea for this or something. Okay. He's mostly urine related for some reason. <laughs> recently, like, I really wish he was here. No, it'd be funny. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, urine related. He's somewhere with a blue fedora in Europe right yeah, now. Loving yeah, it, loving it. Annual leave. Yeah. yeah. Good on him. Um, no, so, yeah, where do, so the ideas obviously come from brainstorming. This is actually what I was thinking of just off that. And I just um, forgot my point there. But Larry David from Seinfeld, I always thought with him, was when he's living his day-to-day life, like I'm like, is it warped? Because everything he's doing and watching is like kind of creative um, flows for what he's going to deliver on Seinfeld or Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. Is, is that similar for you guys? Like are you able to be present in stuff or he's like stuff just always coming to you and you're like, fuck, I'm, I'm just trying, I'm catching stuff here for content. Because sometimes when you're wired that way, you kind of get caught up in every sort of little moment as like, this is a possibility. That's a possibility or not really. I think I had one, one time, uh, this guy, I was, these, these three brothers that are really, really good friends with since growing up. Um, we're at their uncle's house and, uh, a guy came who I know pretty well. And when he was leaving, it was like, Oh, anyway, see mate, we, we should definitely, we should get a beer sometime. And I, in my head, I'm like, we're never, ever getting a beer ever, like, <laughs> ever. Yeah. And then like the next day we made a video about it because like, it's all about the guy that says, mate, we should get a beer sometime. And the guy has no intention of ever following it up. Yeah. So it happens a bit like that, I reckon. But at the same time, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I'm scrambling to write stuff down so you you don't forget it. Mm. Yeah. I don't I know. There's, what, a, there's a document. There's, yeah, we got a couple a, documents. We got, we're always so you got like mm. a bit of a structure in place of how you would approach it. Yeah, yeah. And then it's more just a note. And then and then you sort of, I've, I've figured out too that often if you don't know how to make it now in two years time or something, because now we've been doing it for a while, you'll you'll find something you've written two years ago and then redo it. Like we did one with a pro surfer recently, Geordie Smith, and he was a legend. I think I wrote it three years ago, but we didn't have a surfer to do it with. And we pitched it to Red Bull and they were like, oh yeah, we really like it. Oh, and wow. then- um. And then Geordie, we were meant to do it with Jack Robinson, who's the used to be the oh, six months ago was world number one or something. Mm. And then Geordie Smith was the only person available. And we had him for like six minutes, and he was pretty. He was great in the end. It worked out really well, and it, it did really well. But it, that idea was originally thought of like years ago. Mm. Oh, this is this is what's interesting to me because before I get into sort of the business side of things, and that's something on this podcast we we cover a bit about because I, I kind of. Uh, find it quite interesting particularly with content creation because you are a bit of an entrepreneur uh, entrepreneur in a way in the sense of what you're getting and what you're giving to the platform is maybe what you'll get out of it and even you could work and put content out for ages but without potentially working to align with brands sometimes rewards you know not necessarily coming your way but when did it actually start to take a turn in your eyes of like getting broader recognition as like you know people maybe not necessarily starting to recognize you but followers going up maybe a, a viral video that the moment started to change. Because in my position now, we're looking at you guys, I feel like you guys are quite big. Oh. Even, even though you guys don't think that. My, my end of the spectrum, I'm like, I think you Well, guys I still live with my dad um, on a mattress <coughs> on Content the floor, creation. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with my girlfriend. It's, <laughs> it's like I'm work like this, to me, even though I love it so much, it's still, I've got this main gig going with radio and it still feels like I'm doing night shift at the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's so much fun. Yeah, but that's the that thing. Is, you feel like a little kid at times, I bet. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, for sure. Especially because Josh is leading it from the front like so so much producing pretty much every video and i reckon 
I mean, Josh has always said over the few years he's appreciated it and the time that we can give him. But now it's like, no, I've always got to be ready for you. I've yeah. always got to be ready to go and willing to do stuff and film at any time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's some, sometimes, especially in social media, it's so like you have to do it within 24 hours, otherwise it's no longer relevant. And like it has a very um, – there's something very shareable if uh, people can see themselves in the the video. So if it's something like we had a video that we did on Qantas because Qantas lost my bag for like two weeks once or I think it was like, ended up, sorry, it ended up being five days or something, but it was a nightmare flight and it was just out of COVID and um, we'd made this video afterwards because I was so frustrated. It was literally like therapy and then um, we sat on it and then three months later there was like this big public outcry and stuff like that and we just posted it again and it, it went, it, it did really, really well. And people are like, all oh, getting around it. So there's something in that as well, like being ready for it. But as far as like a turning point where we realize it's something, well, okay, in our head, we're still nothing. But there, it, it's probably more when there's like guys actually making good things that we were like noticing us. Mm. That was probably the, when you're like, oh, what the hell? You like, we're followed by Patrick, I think it's Bromel, the guy that was made a moody Christmas. Oh, like shit. all these amazing, like, and um, Colin from accounts were like, oh, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> like, that why? Oh, why? I, like, I watch a Moody Christmas every fucking year. Like, I love that <laughs> program. Like, I love the writing of it. It's so awesome. And I feel like I'm coming at it so late as well. So when stuff like that happens, um, I don't know, that kind of gives you a boost of motivation too, that maybe yeah. you're not um, a psycho who's going to be homeless in a year. So do you, <laughs> do you class it now? Do, would you class in your eyes as a business? Yeah, we're definitely going the way of a business. And I reckon the last we, – we've, we've set up a company in it as of, like, next week. Um, and that's big, man. Congrats. Yeah, it's cool. That's, that's awesome. And we learned from a couple of other guys that are in the space. So, Because um, we want to ma- make it serious and we think we can make it bigger and we want to try and make, you know, TV shows or web series or Absolutely. short short fi- um, films and stuff like that. We want to make the best things we can possibly make. I don't, I don't know. What was your turning point, Harry? When you quit, not you're, Ashley and Mark. When you, when you, <laughs> yeah, I'm going on car here. When you, <laughs> when had you, I think when you quit your job to do this full time, I've gone. Well, holy shit, he's all in. How do I let's <coughs> let's catch it? Let's get That's there. A, let's what, get what, there what one day. Did that happen? And why why did you make that call? Uh, I was working in the West Australian, and it was just I was staying up till two or two a.m. often to get these edits out because. And you only had the till I got home until I went to sleep, and then if I woke up early as well. And then it, with the grand finals in Perth, and we, we were doing so much. We sold all these shirts, and we do all this other stuff. And I actually asked so much of the boys those couple of weeks. I mean, Harry were delivering shirts by hand around WA, but we accidentally <laughs> sold five hundred. And then, um, yeah. And then the problem with and the problem with selling fire and shirts yeah. for twenty dollars each with no margin is one you make no money, yeah. and two you actually have to deliver them somehow. And then, <laughs> oh no! So we're like, oh, we Jack, through the roof. We sent the website live for the shirts, and I'd gone to the post office and bought twenty. Um, uh, prepaid parcels and then they sold out in about two hours. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. But that was, you're right, actually, that was a good like, little little turning point as well. Seeing people, um, friends and randoms, wearing those shirts at the grand final when it was here in WA was awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Like, holy shit, they're getting around this, you know, this, this shit we're doing. No, yeah. it's, it's, it's insane. Hey, legends, just a quick break in this episode to thank our partners, Dabble, the gambling agency, where you dabble socially and gamble responsibly. Please only bet what you can and are willing to lose. Now, Dabble is one of the great platforms out there. I absolutely love using it. Very similar to Instagram, where you can follow some of the head honchos in the different sports, copy their bets and get some good wins on the board. Now, Fortunately for me, I've been working with Double for over a year. This year, we are doing a stream every Tuesday night. It's called Jake's Take. It's from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. where you can go in the Double app. You can join me. We get guests on every week. We bet on the dogs. We have an absolute ball, and they're talking about sport and cutting up the shop around what's going around town across all codes. So come on down, check it out, Double socially, gamble responsibly, and let's get back into the episode. Harry, for you, obviously now you guys are working with other – creators, comedians, athletes at times, like, is that a bit of a pinch yourself moment? Is there anyone that you sort of been pretty impressed that, you know, you guys in WA creating content and having a bit of fun have been able to attract onto your videos? I mean, not so much athletes. I'm kind of like, <laughs> I love sport. And I'm, I get like, these guys are doing amazing things. For me, it, being in the radio world, one was actually, when Jack struck up a relationship with Jack Post, I was like, hang on a sec, because yeah. I've been following these guys on Three Hamish and Annie for 
fucking years. You know, I used to listen to the radio, those guys, and I wouldn't – sorry, I actually wouldn't listen to the radio when they were on because then I'd ruin, it would ruin the podcast for me. Oh, really? Yeah, that night it would ruin the podcast. Yeah. Then, oh, yeah, yeah. That's how serious you were yeah, about yeah, it. Nah, turn it off. You'd sacrifice your day yeah. so you could listen to the podcast. Well, i just not listen to it in the car. Yeah. You know, if I'm driving along with mum or something. Since yeah. I started in, oh, I don't know, the mid 2000s, I started, started going. So, Do you reckon, like, I honestly, I mean, we're in that generation of growing up, like, through high school watching Hamish and Andy, um, like, from. Uh, What's it? Thank God you're any. any uh, thank, thank God, God, God you're, you're here. here. Yeah. Then what, what was the one they when they were traveling overseas? Gap years. Gap years. Like real all, stories. Was like great. for me, I don't know if like a lot of the sort of teenage or different generations now, but people that were born sort of two thousand and beyond know how funny those guys were because mm. they're still massive now, and probably people just see them as like radio personalities, but they were like cultural mm. like figures oh, yeah. in my life, like in regards to like setting trends, like making me laugh. No, they're like the most famous people in the country for a period. Yeah. I still think like, yeah, they are. Like that's why they have so much power in anything they ever do. Like they just started a podcast and it's great, obviously. But they, as soon as they started, they're just like, bang, biggest in the country. Like, They're pretty smart though. I think like, I feel like they've only, I, this is only from the outside in. It's just, I feel like they've just always created stuff that they know they could just smash. Like they, they, they work extremely well together. And this is again, me not knowing how they operate. So I don't know. I think they're, and they seem to like not burn any bridge from anyone they work with. It seems like they're great people to know and work yeah. with too. So they're probably a pretty good example of like how you meant to operate. Yeah, that's true. That's mm. true. So Jack Boast is a big one for you. That, I mean, that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I kind of do his job <coughs> that he used to do. Panel, well, yeah. Panels, do the panels for the radio. Yeah, it know? seems like whenever I watch him, I'm like, this guy just has one of the funniest jobs ever because he just laughs like constantly mm. in between yeah. what they're doing. And it seems like he's a part of the show almost in, in, it, in itself. Oh, for sure. I and mean, you can add a lot as well without saying anything. Yeah. On the panels with sound <laughs> well, and, and music beds, you know. Like Josh is doing the paneling our podcast as we're doing yeah. it. And the... When he drops the beds in, you know, whether it's as simple as something like sad piano or music, <laughs> it sets the scene mm. and the people on the mics react. So if I can do that as much as possible on the um, radio show, then I can – and they, I, it's, it's appreciated from the hosts. Yeah, well, that's good. That's mm. great. Um, I do want to get into the podcast, but I just want to stay in the business aspect for oh, a yeah, bit sure. because obviously now you've just kind of turned it into a business. But um, I found that interesting that you went all chips in, left your job to go all in on this, which I, I really do admire, but – how do you sort of go from now the idea of wanting to be a business or becoming a business to actually, in your eyes, like sort of making it stand up and, and continue to, to grow and, and be healthy in a sense? Um, I think it's due diligence with all the small things. Like just, I, as you can imagine, I'm, I'm pretty bad with keeping track of all <coughs> accounts receivable and stuff like that. So, you know, I've got a good accountant and stuff like that, as boring as it sounds, but that was a huge thing for me to try and get is unfortunately you have to pay money to help people, to get people in that are good at those things. Um, so that's been a big step, uh, getting a mate in who's an accountant to do that. And then also just sort of knowing your value as well. So knowing that all these companies now want video content and they sometimes often want, want what you make. So if you set a price and you're comfortable and have other things set up and we have some really good companies we work with that we really value their support. Um, if you sort of stick by that number and then walk away from other ones still, then if they really like you enough, then they'll, they'll meet you at that point. Right. I spoke to these, I think it was like Tony and Ryan or something. I can't remember, but they're amazing podcasts and they've done amazingly well from guys that were producers that just went on their own and pushed it really hard. And, uh, is you still get people offering, you know, a can of Coke and a T-shirt for something that you've priced quite a, quite differently. Mm. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into them and, you know, some people might see that as expensive, some people might see it as cheap, but um, you still need to eat. And with three of us as well doing it, then, you know, you have to divide everything by three as well or whatever it is. So, um, I th yeah, I'm getting better at it. It's trying to – there'll probably be some lean period, but at the end of the day, we're so grateful that we get to – um make stupid crap for a living like it's pretty cool and i think like i remember just being uh in jobs and you know you're depressed and and worried about fuck is it this is it right and you have little glimmers of moments where you really enjoy it but you know i, I never don't enjoy this so there's anxiety about that i might it might fuck up but at least i'd really enjoy it well yeah you're kind of not gonna Worry, wondering, are you? Like no. you have a crack at it. But it's funny. I think back to in high school. Did you guys ever think it was a possibility to, to the space you're in now for that to be like a, a job? 
No. Nah, like nah. It's pretty cool now for the people coming through high school. They see people like you mm. doing mm. it, and you're like, actually, I can fuck uni up for it, and I can go be a bit of a dickhead and just do it, do it with my mates, but you know, in a smart manner and make it a job. Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't think, think Instagram even existed when we were in. Well, yeah, high it, it, it hardly, wasn't 2012 hardly. or 2013 yeah, yeah, yeah. or something, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I just went down the classic boring path: go to go to uni and do a commerce degree. Yeah, God, I hated that. But so you much. must like really appreciate the space you're in now, then more so if you've actually gone through that process. Because I went to uni and I was like, "Fuck, that that was painful, man." Like my <laughs> eyes were bleeding through classes at times. Like it was just so. Oh, hard. Did you get that looked at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it good looking rooster. So. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so yeah, it was tough, man. I mean, I think doing the a commerce degree, I did that because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Well, that's, a, yeah, the and then economics you, and And it kind of learned that you don't want to do that when you're doing the <laughs> commerce degree. Yeah. Really? And you're going, shit. And I mean, I've gone, after uni, I pissed up to America for a little while work at a ski resort. Came back and I'm like, oh, I've got to get a job now. Then I've gone, well, I've got a commerce degree. What's the easiest thing in commerce? It was marketing. So you go get a marketing <laughs> yeah. job. Yeah. And then I've... Um, I, there was always a little seed in me about like radio and something, you know, the content in that side of things. So I've, I think I was secretly just trying to get a job at a radio station. And then I did go get work in sales. Well, and sales and marketing I, are in every business. So and that's I think I, to do. I think I was just going to got a job in sales secretly. I just wanted to go and uh, do stuff on the radio. So right. it kind of worked out. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, so for, for you, when you're, you mentioned there before, you, you had a video around surfing you end up reaching out to Red Bull. Like, I just want to pick the pick the brains behind that. Are you putting forward, like, in your mind, are you creating content just purely because you find stuff funny and then you're figuring out, is there a way we can maybe profit off this and make this bigger or is it is it much more strategic than that in a sense? Um, oh, sometimes you get com- companies coming to you and they're like, oh, do you want to pitch for this idea and stuff? And then you'll sort of brainstorm and come up with ideas. But that one in particular was just was pretty serendipitous that we already had something pre-written. Um, often companies and briefs, they, they give you stuff and, you know, they have, you know, it's an agency that's given it to you and they have a very specific idea in mind of what they want. And so even when you come up with a wicked idea, they're like, yeah, that's great. What we were thinking was <laughs> if you just scream the brand down the camera. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh, I, oh, okay. Um, it's a bit different. So, um, you know, it's a bit both ways. I think we always try and go the other way first is like write it, but, um, I mean, sometimes you just need money, unfortunately. Well, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the thing. At this point of time as well, it's like you probably naturally got juggling more than just creating content now. It's actually, it's actually a business, so you've got to think a bit differently than maybe when you first started. Like, this is just a bit of fun. I think the best the best advantage we have right now still is that, I mean, I'm lucky that the boys still work. Giorgio's dropped down a little bit of time as well, which is really handy as well. But uh, the biggest thing, like the biggest advantage and disadvantage is that we are in Perth. Like, the cost of living's you know, less than Sydney. If we were there, that'd be tough i can you know live with my dad for a bit <laughs> and yeah, you love it i do, oh, I do. it's good yeah. it's good it's good saying has him. he been in some of the videos yeah he's in heaps oh, yeah he's, i was gonna say i'm pretty sure yeah. i've seen your old man yeah. in some of the videos great guy he's getting a big yeah. head though yeah, big <laughs> head. Getting, oh yeah good he on can't that. Kind of the door. build him up <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah just build him up he was at the golf club he reckons and someone um <laughs> oh, no, someone, someone goes oh my god you're, you're um in josh Gart's videos and then um he goes yeah 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 whatever and then, um, and he goes, oh, I was going to give her an autograph, but, you know, because I thought it'd be funny to tell you I gave someone an autograph, but I couldn't find a pencil. And I, I, was, just started, I was like, why are, you, why are you searching for a pencil of all things? I was picturing this geriatric guy asking everyone for a pencil. Um, no, so there's, it's just easy to do it here. So I think we just need to keep, keep slogging it because sometimes it feels like we're going backwards and other days it feels like we've done nothing. Like, mm. so I think the perspective thing is always so hard in every industry to figure out. Is there, and I don't want to uh, make one brand stand above any others, but is there anyone that you've sort of worked with from a brand perspective that you're like, holy shit, that's pretty cool? Like you just mentioned Red Bull before, but like. Oh, Red Bull were cool. Like they were really, they were really handy to work with. Um, and like they were actually good, the Perth team. They were like real supportive. Um, I don't know, Harry, any. Mm, I, yeah. was gonna th- I was going to say Red Bull. I mean, that, yeah. was, that was a cool one. Oh, the yeah, AFL was pretty though. crazy. Well, yeah, yeah AFL. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's funny to me because like speaking to you guys about AFL, you're like, yeah, we like it, but we like, kind of grow up in Perth and we watch it. <laughs> but like in Melbourne, I'm like, these guys like are ingrained in AFL. <laughs> 
<laughs> like to it's, some of the videos man, because you've hit like such like like I go back to the signs one, but that's like very topical. It probably comes back to the point of like, yeah, you know, this is happening now. We've got to jump on it straight away. Yeah, and the problem with that one is, is I did, and it took six six weeks. <laughs> did and, it really? Yeah, and it did really. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's still but, kind of relevant though. Yeah, yeah, still it's true. That's what why we fuck did is it. with that, by the way. Like, is uh, it, it's so strange. Yeah, it is a bit weird. Some of them are. I think they just get a bit of um. They're allowed to have a bit of creative license yeah. in, in the department. Maybe well, making yeah. those signs all he does. The dabbing stereo is the best one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking with AFL at the moment, and, and it's not to necessarily harp on about the game, but it is a bit of fiasco at the moment in regards to like rules and tribunals and you know just a lot of things that are happening. Like it's a bit of a playground for you guys. If really, if there's quite a lot of stuff there. Yeah, we should probably do more on the tribunals. Like the tackling thing is so funny. We wanted. Yeah, I don't know. The playground for us, particularly with the podcast, is the comments. Uh, any comments on social media? <laughs> I, I think we we love the sport. And we love sport, all sports, yeah. but we are, we understand that it is just a sport. Well, it, I, well this is the thing. Even AFL media is a bit of a like a playground for you guys too, because they treat it like life or death. Yeah, and you like mm. listen to some of these guys talk like week to week about the game. You're like, it is just a fucking game. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> like seriously, it's man, it's lot. so intense in Melbourne, bro. Like, yeah, if you put is. the radio on, it's like, mate, that guy should never play again. And it's like. Like he had, had we, what, 10 we touches. Found, we, like, we, we were just listening to, I was listening to Dwayne Russell today and um, I'm a big talkback fan and um, some some old guy rang up and goes, did you see the Essendon game on the weekend? And Dwayne Russell's like, yes. And he responds with, the, all those players should be shot. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and Dwayne Russell, like to his credit, just goes, yeah, I don't agree with that, but I do yeah. see your point about kicking a forward. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, let's right. get rolling. Straight so, away. See, in his head, they should all have a bullet in them because they didn't win the game. So, no, you got to love the passion in that stuff. I was just thinking, like, from you guys, because I like, uh, and I love naturally being around funny people like like yourselves, but is there anyone from a, like, a media perspective in the AFL that you guys love to watch in the sense of not just for what they say about the game, but, like, because there's gold in what they say, like, they're funny or they get it severely wrong so much that it's it's quite humorous to you guys. Well, Chompers. Chompers. Chomp, chomp, chompers. Oh, chompers. I actually love Chompers. Yeah, we're a, I think yeah, he's, yeah the, he's a, he doesn't say anything too out there. Yeah. And he's kind of a, well, he's a bit of a punching bag now yeah. these days. But he likes taking but the he, piss out of everyone. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He, I like it the way he operates. Yeah, that's, that's what's the that. Sunday footy show. Is that, I mean, yeah. that's, that's a pretty good show. That's in yeah. regards to a bit of banter. Um, I love Anthony Hudson. I think he's awesome. I, I, I don't know. I'm a bit of a nerd for all the commentary stuff. There's a guy called Brenton Speed who's like one of the yeah, best commentators Brenton in the Speed. country. Yeah, he was an A-league commentator. He, yeah, because he, he commentates every sport. You know, I swear he's done he's rugby. He's so, so freaking talented. He's yeah. unbelievable. Like he did the... Uh, you just you. The, he, I saw him doing volleyball at the Olympics, and it was just awesome. Mm. Like it was great. So he's a, he's a classic case of he might not have the the profile of someone like I don't know Hamish McLaughlin, yeah, but he's actually just an amazing. Caller. He does he does golf as well. I think. Yeah, yeah, he's he a, does he's, everything. He's wow. a genius. <laughs> it's actually a really good point. Shout out Brendan Speed. <laughs> yeah. He commentated one of my A League games. He's like I had a high a bucket ace in my uh, surname, and I remember just loving him because it's like my second game and the, the first game they got my name wrong. Yeah, and I, I watched it back with my old man once, just because like we wanted to watch it. It's like yeah, big, yeah. big thing. Yeah, of course. And Brenton Speed was like, "Yeah, it's Barkett. I was like, "Fuck, you got my name right." Yeah. I've never nice. forgot him. I've never forgot him since. Yeah, Mate, he would have been prepping for two days. Though. Yeah, but like mm. no, no, yeah, different cat. Yeah, yeah no, they they're great. Um, I don't know. We <laughs> we kind of like I don't know. I love it all. Kind of like. I even get around the, the NBA media as well and NFL media too. Like I'm, I kind of like love obsessing over all that stuff. Yeah, and, me too. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with um, the, the F1 commentators. Yeah, uh, Harry loves ah, it. Brun really? Yeah, Brundle and David Croft. That's um, great sport. They everyone. they add fun to the most boring parts of a race yeah. and they add excitement. Yeah, yeah it's pretty. That's, it's that's it's just, it's just you're seeing like 40, 50 years in the sport mm. come out in one moment of commentary and it's impressive. Like for, for you, what, when do you see that happening? Because I imagine qualifying is a good time in the race, maybe the sort of initial introductions and the start of the race, but it's across like the when, whole. When like race lap 20 around the same course. Well, it's when there's like a safety yeah. car or a delay or something, they're just like so good at padding. Because you yeah. don't, it doesn't lose a beat. The padding, and <laughs> they're, and they they are uh, the best padders in the entire world. They're crazy. Oh, yeah. oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and get, like they have a real rapport. Like Crofty and um, 
and Brundle. They're sick. Oh, my They're God. So those two, yeah. I actually got his name wrong when I met him once. Did yeah. you call him Martin Croft? I was like, no, no. I said, hey, <laughs> oh. Brun, uh, Ma- uh, Brundle, and he goes, I'm Crofty, mate. I was like, oh, oh no. I was like, damn, damn, damn. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> like, Brundle's grid walks? Come on. They're the best yeah. things oh, going around. It, was that, that's not the guy that gets the people's names wrong, though, is it? Oh, he got one name wrong. Oh, right. He's, it's the hardest job, though, because mm. he's, he's in like, okay, let's drop you in space. Oh, he's, he's so, so I do know who he is. He's, he's, unbel- he's, lo- yes. he's an icon yeah. in yes. the sport. And even though he clearly doesn't care about what this celebrity is up so he's got a couple of questions ready for them. Yeah. Obviously, people are feeding through his earpiece as well, but yeah. he does. He well. kind of comes in with like this charisma, like, oh, so who are you? Like, yeah, yeah it's cool. It's pretty funny. Like, gangster levels them out a bit, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is pretty cool. We yeah. like, don't mind BT too. A lot of people hate on BT, but I think, like, actually, I love BT. I like it. Yeah. Again, prime example, he's bringing excitement. He's yeah. br- he's lifting energy levels yeah. while he's commentating. You know What's what? not to love about I, that? I, I, look, I could have got this so wrong, so I apologize, BT, but I've got to. I've got a, mute, uh, a friend who sort of knows him and reckons he's like very quiet when he's not oh, on the mic oh, really? to himself, reserved. Like he was oh, at a okay. function one night and like <laughs> he kind of didn't really want to speak to anyone. But then you get him on the mic, he's like a very like- He's a showman and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, like literally right. It's a performance. Well, on that theme, I've got a guy, a guy reckons he met Andrew O'Keefe and he was just like he was on Deal or No Deal. <laughs> 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 in real life, That's but I mean, what? based on the history, the recent history of Andrew, okay, yeah, yeah, maybe my, there's a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. That, that was about to say. Well, let's move into because obviously you guys are doing so much good skits. Oh, uh, there we go, Harry. That's why. That's why. Well, I do want to go off the, the obviously skits because it's probably an extension of your business now. But the idea to start a podcast, like, what? Why was that? a necessary sort of pathway for you guys. So we got offered through a company called MIK. I got offered a opportunity to potentially leave mainstream media. And that was part of the reason leaving too was Spotify were giving out money basically for original content Mm. and uh, they needed a sports program and MIK reached out to me because they're like, oh, we could probably develop something. We ended up putting something together, which was originally full credit. Now um, at the end of a year, we had a two year deal with both with an option. And then the second year we ended up we weren't hearing anything. We weren't hearing anything. And there was no malice whatsoever. It just didn't happen didn't the second right. year for a lot of reasons. And um, now we've been doing it by ourselves. And we learned so much from that. And I think that's the one thing I've learned from this whole thing is you always start these things not knowing anything. And then six months later, you're good at it. So then mm. so it makes you less fearful, I reckon, of starting something new. So now like I edit our podcast by myself and make audio documentaries and stuff. And, and then we cut up our vision as well. So eventually we'll get this point where we want it but we did me we all just love the medium we love podcasts i've always loved podcasts yeah, that's the so reason fun. i got into it yeah so that was the reason i got into broadcasting originally was i was uh, i was an engineer i did an engineering degree and i was working in this job and i was just listening to like 11 hours of podcasts a day mm. and um while i was doing this sort of mathematics based job and then eventually went to broadcasting like a, a postgrad course yeah it's interesting i mean i think it's cool one of the reasons why podcasting obviously recorded conversation and so forth but getting like creating a job off your personality like it's pretty cool when you think of it in that sense because that's kind of what you guys are doing and to an extent every person in a podcast medium is kind of doing as well like they're just covering or capturing content from who they are as a person yeah, I, I was speaking to my sister yesterday and um, we were talking about the last episode of the podcast. She goes, I wish um, I wish your podcast was just about you, the, what your guys' weekend catch you up. <laughs> the, whole, the whole podcast. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, she's not obviously into a sport as much as a, other people are, but she did really enjoy that, oh, really? that part of it. Oh, that's cool. So w- when you went with uh, sort of the content basis of the podcast, like how would you describe it for the listeners of The Unlaced to – Potentially, if they were interested to go over and listen to it, like what sort of craziness and fun are they going to capture in it? Uh, well, our sort of one rule is like, how do we justify being like three white 30 year old dudes <laughs> talking about sport casually? Um, and so we all have backgrounds in production. So we just sort of thought, let's just make never be lazy and always just triple down on gags. So we just, anytime there's a chance to, do production, like edit something, make an audio sound effect or something like that. We just go right into it. We make fake trailers. We make audio tacos and stuff like radio stings. Um, I, I, I peed in the sink because the the <laughs> because the toilet was occupied in Melbourne at Airbnb, and so Giorgio <laughs> made a trailer called the Sink Pisser because he was so horrified uh, by it. And I was I it was, we were obviously in two months, so I'm not really giving a good um, synopsis, but <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. and sprinkled <laughs> I mean, pissing the sink's interesting. Sprinkled with them in that is a lot of like updates on sport and stuff like that as well. Okay. So yeah, we I do. think the unique proposition is the audio documentaries that Josh is 
uh, mainly putting together. They're awesome. Oh, they're so okay. A combination of uh, random, it could be a little niche thing um, from the sporting world, like, for example, Toby Thurston saying cat dog when he won the uh, got handed the premiership medal back in 2000. And uh, Toby Thurston. 2003. Was he, was he Port Adelaide? Yeah, yeah. For 2004. He goes, cat yeah. dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was an inside joke with all his best mates from a small town in South Australia. And they were watching on a, on a, um, oh no, in Victoria. He was from the morning to Peninsula or yeah, something. Yeah. And they were all in like Albury Wodonga at a, for their footy trip. And they were like all betting, like, oh, he's going to say it. He's definitely going to say it. <laughs> and they were like, he, like, oh, well, he's going to win. And then he won. And then he gets up there and he's got this moment to accept <laughs> his medal and he yells, cat dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a shout out to all his mates. Oh, that's an, that's incredible. So stuff like that. So yeah. you kind of what, you, you're talking in the podcast and you spiral off into like a little separate sort of yeah, so content maybe, stream about, you know, whatever it may be, something like that. Basically making, putting effort into a documentary that otherwise would never get made. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, mate, that's awesome. Mm. I and like then that. there's a bit more topical stuff like, uh, well, the, the we pick call them the headlines from the week of sport, but we don't want to. We never want to talk about stats or like it's just a, analyze a game. Just yeah. pick out the funny bits from it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oddly enough, I, that's what I, I don't really like talking about that either because more so I get the players on it. They don't want to talk about yeah. stats yeah. as yeah. well. So it's like we mm, talk about everything know, else because yep. it's t- it's both. This goes back to Melbourne media. It's spoken about enough. Yeah, for sure. Like, like well, there's we, enough. There's enough podcasts like that. So mm-hmm. we, correct. We kind of just. I think the first couple times we're figuring it out pulled each other up saying it's not really interesting listing assists and rebounds yeah. and stuff like that. You did ha- you did a hell of an intro for the podcast though. I mean, it was like the equivalent of what was you, you're at Optus Stadium. It looked like you guys were <laughs> storming yeah, yeah, the yeah. field. You're sitting on top of the stadium. I was like, the fuck are these guys? Like that was pretty intense. Oh yeah, they were, um, Optus Stadium were held good to us. There's a woman that used to work there that um, was in their marketing team. There's a couple of people actually and they were, they were really handy and they just said, hey, do you want to get on the roof for like, and we're like, yeah, actually there is, um, <laughs> we have something coming up we might need it for. So just they let us do it. They've actually let us do it twice. The funniest bit was one time we um, we filmed something on Optus Stadium and we invited down like 25 extras and it was for a fake like uh, movie called Kick It Forward and and at the end of it, there was a security guard called Karen and she was there to like uh, make sure we didn't rip up the turf because they're protective of the deck. And she goes, well, you got another half an hour. You guys want to go? And I go, no, no, no. Everyone wants to leave. And I turn around and there's all these like 25 to 35 year old guys just having cracks from thir- from 50 out. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all yeah. stripping with sweat. Just it's like great. The We're worst <laughs> kicks ever. <laughs> and just all kids. Just like how often you get to have a crack at Optus Stadium, you know what I mean? Or the MCJ. Well, it's a, well apparently by, by all reports, and I've never actually watched a sporting event there, but obviously I've had friends playing the AFL that played there. Like people mm. say, and people who've gone to it say it's like the best ground to go to in the country, which is a massive call when you come from Melbourne. Obviously you've got the MCG and stuff. But yeah. A lot of people are saying that. Like, is it that good? It is. Right? It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got forty thousand less than the M's than the J, but um, it's still it's modern facilities. Mm. Um, yeah, I can't fault it. There's not a bad seat. It's kind of like Adelaide mm. Oval in that regard. Like, yeah. there's not really a bad seat. It doesn't have a lawn. Lawn would be cool. Oh, like the, hill. Oh. the hill. I mean, yeah. they they what, they play cricket there as well. Speaking of the yep. Ashes, are you guys what do you guys watch the Ashes at all? Yeah, like a little bit. Tough, yeah. tough with the um, well, the time zone. Yeah, mm. what's well, better than Melbourne? Actually, it's yeah, 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 yeah. You get yeah. two hours more, obviously yep. here. Yeah, it's actually pretty handy here, actually, because yeah. you, like, you can watch all <coughs> except for a couple of hours or something like that. No, I don't. I don't watch too much, but I normally get the watch the highlights and the wraps the next day. Yeah, because yeah. the what I the, the pro- pretty much why I love the Ashes not so much about the cricket; it's about the hatred for the fans of each country. Yeah, like there's yeah. genuine hatred when it comes to cricket or the Ashes with the Poms and. Australia, like some of the TikToks flying around. Have you, yeah. have you seen some of them? Like people yeah. like oh the Barmy Army. Yeah, and Aussie guy. An Aussie guy gave it. He might even be from Perth. I forget what its uh, platform was, but he like he wants to do like a YouTube boxing thing with Ollie Robinson for giving Usman Khawaja a send off. Like he he wrote him a, a letter, <laughs> and he read wow. it like it started off like fuck you Ollie, just to start with, and it ended like I want to fight you. And I'm like what the fuck? And then you've got a guy who's like who, from England who's doing the same thing, who's literally coming back at all the. Um, Aussie like broadcast radio people and media people who have like had a dig at Ollie Robinson and like just calling them out and I'm like that people actually hate each other. Yeah, the, it's, it's a really fun rivalry. I think it's all it, for the most part pretty like well like it's banter. Well I take it yeah. as banter, yeah, but it's just funny how it just erupts. People. Yeah, like it, just, it, it flicks a uh, like a bit of blood well, in some people. Well, fan is short for fanatic, right? So there's a couple True. in there that are batshit. I guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the best yeah. in the best way possible. 
Uh, so you guys are going to get guests on for your podcast? Have you guys been getting guests on or is it mainly the kick it forward guys? Like what's the sort of thought process? Uh, yeah, we're trying to figure out a better way to doing it right now. We have got we have Jack Watts next week. We interviewed him a couple of weeks ago. Oh, awesome. um, but we're mostly, mostly trying to get them on if it's, okay, we have a question that hasn't been answered about something. Mm. Like how can we in- – Involve them so there are also guests during the um audio documentaries as yeah, well. That, that's for yeah. like during oh, so the you, audio, so do you yeah. have like people that just pop up in the show versus like actually stay on the show for like the whole show? No, is we've never done this, someone in the whole show. I think we probably will end up doing that, but the problem is we're just in Perth, so yeah. a lot of the people we would have on aren't here, so yeah, it's tough. Um, I think like like we'd love to do something like Broden Kelly and something if that would probably be a co host that we have a fourth person on or something that might, might be the way we do it in the future, actually. If the, like a comedian or an athlete's in town, we'll have them as the fourth get host or something like that. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Well, yeah. it, it w- would be remiss of me to not ask, like, and I'm sure maybe there's a, a thought process around it, but like what the end goal would be. Like, a, obviously there's a, a bit of a nirvana I'm sure you guys are working towards. I know it's probably day by day at the moment, but mm. you can't not look to the stars sometimes. So what, what, what would be the sort of end goal you guys want to achieve? What do you want to do, Harry? I actually don't think I've ever Can asked I, st- you. I mean, my, my, I've, I've thought about the short-term goal and it's to have um, – the ability to put more energy into it, <coughs> into right. what into what Josh is, um, yeah, what we've been doing for the last few years. Yeah, um, I'm in a. I feel like I'm in a position where it's hard to like you know dr- like dream big and you know I want to do this and want to do that when I'm not doing 100 percent of my time isn't into it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so yeah. it's hard. It's hard question for me to answer. Yeah, that well said. Mm. Yeah. Um. Oh, we got a couple of web series ideas that I trying to get funded right now um, for next year. I think my one goal this year is to make something really nice on the, like, beautiful on a larger scale. So just learn. So learn that way. They'll make a web series or a short film or something like that. Um, I think a show is within our realm, but... I feel I, like a TV show or some sort of skit show. I, th- I think that needs idea. to be the end goal. Whether w- Whatever it looks like at the end might be different, whether we're on someone else's or helping someone. I think it's just... I think that is the end goal at some point is to make something that, people like on a bigger scale um yeah. and yeah i don't i don't know we just we love it. it's been so fun making what we do right now so i think also just tripling down on the stupid side is possible yeah keeping it fun as well yeah. like that that would be important but well, I, it's funny we probably do have actually quite a lot of content creators um who tune into this show but like some advice you can give to some people who are starting out in this space or early in their journey that you know if you had your time again you would have loved to have known uh okay. get a well one thing I can say is that Josh does, he just gets the phone out and starts recording. <laughs> He'd write it and then go and do it. Just uh, do it. Like, that's the – sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh, where, where do we start? Where are we going to start this one? And I don't know, you've always seemed to got something – always got a place to start. Yeah, I think um, I think it's, like, for me, I was always so scared of putting this stuff out due to the judgment of what it would be, but eventually you just don't care. Um, you just say, oh, well, it's just another video. You don't see it that way. You're like, it's just another one. So yeah. I'm already thinking of the next one. So maybe not to fear the public reaction anymore because otherwise you're never going to do it, I guess. Um, yeah, just do it. Have to, it sounds stupid, yeah. but maybe start trying to make something, I guess, because, you know, it's reps. It's like a reps thing. And you just, like sport, you do all of a sudden you've done a year. Yeah. You've made 60 and you've written and edited and filmed 60 and whether whatever it is. I don't know. Like, like okay, how many yeah. skits would you guys have done, do you reckon? Like, n- not necessarily ones that you put out as well, like, just in general. Like, how much do you reckon you guys have done? Because I assume you've got a quality control thing as well. There's probably some, yeah, quite some a few sitting it. in the in the, the locker somewhere. We some like, actually, some of them might probably remake that would that probably early on was shit. And mm. then... The hungover one. Yeah. We need to remake yeah, that, that one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll still that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Yeah, How I reckon we probably reckon? make sixty a year or something, and let let like, it depends though, because some some take way longer and stuff like that. We try mm-hmm. the goal right now is make three videos a week, one podcast a week, and three clips, but we we just don't have enough time <coughs> currently to do it all. Yeah, unless everything works out perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, especially when you got different people, so many people involved as well. So yeah. it makes it harder. Yeah. Um. Well, probably last question from us before we wrap up with you guys, but uh, it, the fans or the the listeners of the show will, will understand this one because we always ask it. We attest sort of three key traits to success in sport or business. Um, and all three are important, but we just want to kind of get the ones that's most relevant to your journey. So resilience, driver, ambition, what's been sort of pivotal for for the both of you that without you wouldn't be where you are right now? Um, drive. Yeah, probably drive, having a motivation that pushes you t- to see beyond what 
there's like a little bit of delusion of grandeur in it all. Yeah. Of being like... You need to be a bit delusional. Actually. Yeah. That's a really good point. Uh, in, some, in some capacity, but yeah, drive to be like, oh, I just really like making this. Let's just keep making it. Even if um, someone D- DMs you, you suck, Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's resilience. Actually, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that's resilience. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's an interesting question. You always get different answers, but... Yeah. Um, or Josh, Harry, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Oh, my it was pleasure. great to meet you a couple of weeks ago and obviously over mm. in Perth now. So I appreciate you giving us your time. For those uh, uh, that have tuned in, go go give a follow to Kick It Forward if you aren't already on Instagram and TikTok. What's the podcast? It's Kick It Forward podcast. Yeah, just search yep. Kick It Forward on any of the platforms yeah. and you'll be able to find it. You won't be, you'll be able to find these six foot five, six foot six giants. <laughs> so, shows. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your time. Guys, appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week.